Doctors of Reddit, what is your worst case of I googled my symptoms? I had a grade school kid tell me he had a brain tumor. Turns out he put a dried bean in his ear and forgot about it. This is the best thing I've read on this thread so far. Not a doctor, but I had a co-worker come into the office with this one. He was having nausea, fatigue, frequent urination and decided to webmd that crap. We're chatting in the office one day and he says something like yeah, I've been feeling like crap lately, and it sounds like gestational diabetes but I can't find any cases of men getting it. I just slowly lowered my head into my hand and asked him do you even know what gestational means he did not. <laughs> Paramedic student here. Last week we had a call for an imminent delivery. PT started having abdominal pain that would last a little bit and stop and about 2-3 minutes later would start again. She googled her symptoms and everything she found was saying she was in labor. She called her husband and he told her to call 9 one, one. We walked in as the baby was crowning. She had no idea she was pregnant. Not a doctor but when my fiance said he was having chest pains and when he breathed, it crackled. I googled and all of the symptoms led to serious illnesses such a collapsed lung. Thought nothing of it, diagnosed it ourselves as an allergy and didn't go to a doctor till later in the day. It was in fact a fully deflated collapsed lung. Not a doctor but worked at a hospital for a while. One of our doctors came back to the nurse's station laughing because someone was fully convinced they were diabetic because they were craving water and Webb said that makes them diabetic. But turns out they are just human and required to live. People are funny. Just last week a lady came in with shoulder pain. After examining her and comforting her she told me that she was afraid it was cancer since she had been googling. Shoulder pain. Man. WTF Google. Actually I'm a doctor, but this story is from medical school. I had a patient who correctly diagnosed herself with mastitis, although she was very worried that she had inflammatory carcinoma of the breasts. To be fair, they can look similar. Another time, I had a patient correctly diagnose a lump in her breast as a fibroadenoma. I was very impressed. If you are a breast surgeon with that username, my day is made. I'm not a doctor, but I'm a medical assistant and I room patients for the doctor. This is in the occupational health field and we had a young gentleman come in who was pretty sure he had a groin hernia according to his google search. He said he'd been lifting produce crates and experienced sharp, overwhelming pain in his groin. And the doctor came back out after seeing him and was clearly fighting laughter by the time he got to the desk. Turns out the kid had chlamydia which had caused things to become swollen and just happened to get symptomatic while he was at work. Poor guy. Had a patient come in and tell us she is having vision issues that are new. Okay let's have a look. Oh, looks like you placed a contact over a contact. 27 times. Not a doctor, but in 2013 I was feeling awful. Shaking, puking, dry heaving. Shaking, excruciating and debilitating pain. Went to the I had blood work done that I never knew what it said and the doctor told me it was a gallbladder attack. Gave me pain meds and sent me home. Three days later I was even worse. Couldn't eat. Couldn't sleep. The only relief I felt was when I was in scalding hot bath. I finally went back to the ear and they did more blood work and told me my gallbladder was septic and my pancreatic enzymes were 6500 and rising. They should have only been 100 150 and I was dying. I was admitted and when they did my gallbladder removal, my gallbladder was solid black and had 80 stones and a to like substance from sepsis. Come to find out the first time I went to the ear my enzymes were 2000. I should never have been allowed to leave the hospital. My brother is both the doctor and the patient in my story. Around 2 months ago he had started to feel really tired and ill. Like really ill. He had said to his partner that he felt like he had leukemia. Which was of course just kind of shrugged off because why how would he have leukemia. He had been suffering with a throat infection for a few weeks and was given antibiotics by a GP at his practice. After a week or so it hadn't helped and he was tired and slightly breathless whilst walking the dog one Sunday afternoon. The next morning he registered himself as a patient and took his own bloods, after being prompted by his receptionist, parents, doctor friend, and sent them for testing. Unfortunately he had been completely correct and when his results returned he saw that he did have leukemia, acute myeloid leukemia to be precise. 
He saw the results and knew immediately, as he went to confirm them with the GP next door. The specialist hospital had already called and asked for the patient to be brought into hospital immediately. Unfortunately his hemoglobin levels and general cell count were so low and he was in a really bad way. Many transfusions and one round of chemotherapy done and he is determined to beat this horrible disease. There's a long long way to go. But he won't give up and neither will we. I love that guy so much and wish I could trade places with him. There's potential that I may be used as his bone marrow donor. I hope I can be because anything I can do to help, I want to do. It's not too likely to be me but I feel so helpless right now so it would be good to help, I guess. Anyways, no Google but turns out these doctor guys are pretty dang good at their jobs. Even when it's certainly not their specialism. I so so hope he makes it. Also hope you can be the donor. Not a doctor but I deal with migraines. I would not be surprised if someone experienced a migraine for the first time, googled their symptoms while they still had the clarity to do so, and went to the of thinking they are having a stroke. I had a stroke and thought it was a migraine, so this problem totally goes both ways. I had a UT, because I had the symptoms and googled it. Day of doctor appointment, it was just a regular checkup. But I asked for a UT test since I explained how I was feeling. Convo went like this. Could it be possible to request a UT testing? I've been feeling the symptoms of burning when I pee and some discomfort. How do you feel now? Any pain? Well no not at the. Well if you did have a UT the symptoms wouldn't go away you are fine. Two or so days later I get a full blown kidney infection from A. Who would have guessed? A UT. Sent out a complaint. Frick that be doctor. I always ask for a test if I am suspicious of anything and I have them documented if they say no from now on. That was a horrible experience. Edit. I am so sorry so many of you experienced similar stuff. But hey glad we made it. Thanks for the upvotes. I went to a walk in 2 weeks ago cause I couldn't get an appointment with my doctor. I said I have a UT they said okay. Pee in this cup. Yup. You have a UT. Take this pill for 5 days and you should be good. I didn't need to plead my case. This confuses the frick out of me. When I go to a doctor they specifically ask if I've done research about whatever. Like they expect it. Awkward position cause if I have researched I feel like an idiot using Dr. Google and having medical student syndrome. If I haven't researched I get the distinct impression nice disappointed the doc. Ever since we studied multiple sclerosis in neuro, I'm convinced I have it, despite my only symptom being pyrestasis, funny feels, in my legs at night. If your legs just feel weird word at night and you have literally no other symptom it's more and likely just restless leg syndrome. It can feel like an ache or pins and needles, and makes you feel like you need to move, but moving doesn't actually help, usually happens at night or early in the morning, it's pretty common. Not a doctor, but my friend once said a guy came with a backache and wanted to get operated cause he thought he had kidney failure. I can't decide if I actually want to know how he got from point A to point B. Edit. I accidentally read headache and now feel like an idiot Tive Mex D. Not a doctor, but throughout my childhood and teen years I had these weird episodes where I would suddenly have really bad deja vu and get very nauseous. For the next few hours afterward I would feel like I was in a fog and my memory would be crap. Eventually I googled my symptoms and learned they might be minor epileptic seizures. I went to a doctor and he laughed it off and told me it was probably just having panic attacks related to the normal emotions of being a teenager. I was so sure he was wrong that I opted to go get an eek. Turns out I have a mild form of epilepsy and google was totally right. Sounds like you were returning to last checkpoints to me. Not a doctor, but the brother of the patient, and worst being on the money. My older sister diagnosed herself as having symptoms of systematic heart failure. Her new primary doctor agreed and gave her some basic guidelines of what to do, and had her visit her cardiologist. The cardiologist poo pooed her, saying there was probably nothing to worry about and scheduled a test in a few days just to be on the safe side. One of the things her primary had her looking out for was sudden weight gain. And when she woke up two days later suddenly six pounds heavier, we went straight to the emergency room, who ran tests, including an echocardiogram. 
her injection fraction was 12, and they immediately sent her to the biggest hospital in the area, where they ended up saving her life from congestive heart failure. She had had at least two silent heart attacks due to the amount of damage they found. TLDR. I still have my sister because she self-diagnosed correctly. Ejection fraction, rather than injection, as in, how much of the blood is pumped out from a cardiac chamber, atrium or ventricle, but typically ventricle, with each beat, measured in percentage. 12 is bad. I hope your sister's condition is well managed, and good on her for her catch. Not a doctor but I was having horrible debilitating headaches for a while, googled my symptoms and they ranged from stress to brain cancer, ended up being sinusitis. I had that, I got horrible headaches and toothaches, I thought something was in my head like a cancer that was pushing on my brain and teeth, turns out I had stress and vitamin D deficiency. Not a doctor, I had an insect bite basically next to my nipple, it was itching like crazy, and my usual bite cream said not to be used on nipples, so I decided to google what else I could do to relieve it. Found out that apparently no one else has ever had an insect bite on their nipple, but that what looks like an insect bite on or right next to your nipple is almost certainly inflammatory breast cancer. Phoned up my GP, we used to be neighbors so I kind of knew him and was in a right state because I thought I had this incredibly aggressive form of breast cancer. He listened to me for a minute, asked a couple of questions and then said, it's an insect bite. Come back to me if it's still there in 3 weeks. Oh, and try deodorant on it. The deodorant calmed it right down, and it had gone by about 5 days afterwards. Daughter said she was worried about her medicine because she read on the bottle it causes down syndrome. I told her you must have misread and she cut me off because she was sure of it. Get home and read the bottle. May cause drowsiness. Not really related to this topic, but I am a medical student, and recently got sty in my eye. Sty is usually self-diagnosable but I called up my cousin who is a doctor just to confirm. Anyways, when I was telling this incident to one of my friends, he started scolding me saying as a medical professional, I should set the example of going to the doctor and getting proper medicines and treatment and all I could say was, dude, I'm becoming a doc. I know how doctors are doctors especially when they know your medical student tend to overdiagnose or pretend as if we have medical student syndrome. But anyways, got the meds and my eyes healing. Not a doctor. When I talk to doctors I say Google told me blah blah blah. Is that accurate usually helps establish that I've tried to do research but trust them more than Google. I had two separate doctors tell me that I was having panic attacks, when in fact I was having simple partial seizures caused by a line sized cancerous tumor in my brain. I got so much Xanax yo. I got so much Xanax yo. You have 239 new messages waiting. Not a doctor, nor was my brother despite him thinking his Google. Foo is a degree but a couple years ago my brother decided that since I had been laid off and needed to borrow some money from him to tide me over that it meant that I was utterly depressed and suicidal. Thus, he deduced that I needed to be institutionalized and took me to a doctor. He lied and said he wanted me to just get a normal checkup since I hadn't had one in a while. I was, I believe rightly pee off and embarrassed but since I needed the money I went along with it. So he decides to just come into the psychiatrist's office with me while she is trying to ask me some questions and see how I am. He starts throwing out terms like, maladaptive coping and how I am suicidal and needed treatment. She finally tells him to leave and I speak with her for a bit. Now I was a bit morose because I had lost my job and was embarrassed about asking for help but I wasn't suicidal and the psychiatrist agreed stating that I just needed support and not google for quackery. I hadn't turned to drugs, stealing or any other illegal or destruction activities to deal with my depression just that I was a bit withdrawn and down because of my recent low. TLDR. Laid off. Needed some financial help. Brother googled big sounding words and tried to act like a doctor to an actual doctor. No longer interact with that clown and my mental health is quite improved because of it. How is your relationship now? The healthcare system where I live is broken. Someone I know didn't have a doctor, had been looking for one for 7 years and started having worrisome symptoms. The errand clinics wouldn't order tests because follow up appointments would be needed and they didn't do that. She finally went to an and stood her ground, saying she wasn't leaving until they did tests. 
Google suggested she had a brain tumor or a hyperactive thyroid. They reluctantly did the tests and she had to fight for the follow up. Turns out it was a thyroid disorder, for which she was in bad need of treatment. Without Google, she didn't have much ammunition for the fight. I'm not a doctor but I went to a doctor because I was certain I had delayed sleep phase disorder. He told me I couldn't have a sleeping disorder without being depressed and made me take a depression test. It said I wasn't depressed so he said obviously I don't have a sleeping disorder. I went to a sleep specialist a few months later and they diagnosed me with delayed sleep phase disorder and helped me get it under control. I'm way too late to the game, but mine is funny, not a doc but was in a car accident a few years back and while chatting with a paramedic still in my rolled over car I told her that I had sharp pain in my right thigh and couldn't move my right arm or right leg. Assumed I had broken my femur and dislocated my right shoulder. She agreed. Wasn't until they got me into a CT scan that they realized I glass had taken a chunk of my right leg out and I had broken my neck in two places and I really had damaged the nerves on the right side of my body. Oops. At the hospital in my town there was a kid who came in saying he had knee pains. The doctor said it was from playing basketball and 5 months later at a different hospital they found that he had knee cancer and it was too late to treat him. He died a few weeks later. Really sad story. I had a friend whose 11 year old kid presented with similar pains in her knees and thighs. The doctor told my friend she was probably overexerting herself at basketball. It was rhabdomyosarcoma. She died a year later. Edited to correct the spelling. Obligatory not a doctor but the patient. Went to the doc several times as a teen complaining of being extremely lethargic. I slept like 13 hours a day. Extremely pale. Cold all the dang time etc. All classic signs of anemia from what I had looked up. But the doctor said I was overreacting and just being a teenager and refused to even check. Well guess who ends up back at the doctors like a year later after an emergency blood test showed my hemoglobin was at like 6.2. Just being a teenager my butt. Not a doctor, but once back in 4th grade, during winter break, I had some sort of illness that made me throw up, sleepy all the time, and a few other symptoms I can't remember. So I was at my mom's computer, and I decided to google my symptoms since my mom wasn't there. Turns out I had mono, or also referred to as the kissing disease. So after that, I was crying to my mom, hacking my guts out, while my mom tried to calm me down. And to this day, legend has it, I still don't know what I had, and I have never had it again. Obligatory not a doctor, I was the patient. I googled my symptoms of hearing loss. Tinnitus, vertigo, eye focus issues and headaches. I was fairly convinced I had an acoustic neuroma, a rare benign, but if not treated potentially life threatening, tumor on the 8th cranial nerve. The end was convinced it was sinus related, but sent me for an MRI on the very slight chance there was something else going on. At this point I mentioned that I had read about the aforementioned tumor and she looked to be stifling an eye roll. It's always a brain tumor when we google our symptoms. Right, the morning after my MRI I received a call from the ent and she sounded shook. Not only did I have the tumor, it was as big as a golf ball and pushing against my brain stem. I'd say about 3 stroke 4 times a year I get a new, young, male that has googled their symptoms and determined they need a smear test. Yes you read that right. A few men look for advice for their symptoms online and will end up on mums not or the like and see women saying get a smear test, without them actually knowing what it is. I always have to leave the room to excuse myself whilst I have a laugh. A friend of mine when I was younger had been having chronic migraines. The doctors brushed it off telling her to take some pain meds and you'll be fine. Keep in mind she was only in middle school. In the middle of class one day, she collapsed. Aneurysm. Ambulance rushed her to the hospital. Turns out she had a brain tumor the size of a peach. Had chemo. Radiation. The works. Finally able to have it removed, so they cut a large part of her skull out to remove the tumor and had to wear a cast helmet for months. Six years later, she's fine now. Took my 92 year old grandma to her because it was Saturday. Told them I suspected UT. Doc didn't listen. Finally she had to go potty and they brought her potty chair in. After she was through the nurse went to empty it. She took one look at how her urine looked and went out and almost made the doc write order for test. 
Of course it came back as UT. It can be difficult to diagnose a dementia patient because they lose ability to tell doc what's going on. They also become afraid of doctors because they think they will put them in a nursing home or such. A UT can actually exacerbate symptoms of dementia too. Edit. Thought it best to add the source. I'm a clinical support worker and a part of my job involves dipping patients urine samples for evidence of a UT. I learned the dementia bit from one of our review team. Paramedic here. And the worst instance I can think of was a young, fit woman who decided she was having a stroke after, and openly admitting she had, googling headache. I correctly diagnosed myself with dyshydrotic eczema. The pictures I saw matched the issue I had. Then, I read that there are often chemical triggers. Then, I thought about all of the stuff I had done recently. Then, I remembered the lake in my backyard is full of chemical fertilizer runoff from the surrounding golf course, and I was in it about a week prior. Then, I did it again, because I'm stupid. Then, I got a really bad case of the eczema. Then, I never touched the lake again. The end. My stepfather was working in the garden one day, and came inside complaining of feeling hot, tired, nauseous, and his legs hurt. We didn't google his symptoms but assumed he'd had too much sun. He went to bed and woke up several times and his symptoms were no better. My mum called an ambulance when he woke up at 1am vomiting uncontrollably. He was dead less than 5 hours later from septicemia. I think my doctor thinks I'm a bit of a drama queen for googling symptoms and coming in to get stuff checked now, but I'd rather err on the side of caution. Not a doctor, but my girlfriend was feeling a strong sharp pain around her stomach in the middle of the night. I googled it and in my opinion it was a kidney stone or maybe something gynecological related. I wasn't sure of anything but I had acquired enough knowledge to know that it might be bad and we had to do something. So we go to the hospital. We wait hours and hours until we saw a doctor. And she asked her, can you rate your pain in a scale from 1 to 10? She responded 7. And then she looked at her for a second and said while laughing a bit, well, no, your face doesn't look like a 7 and she left. Another doctor concluded it was just a gastroenteritis and give her some paracetamol after we had waited a full night at the hospital and then we left. She was still in a lot of pain, maybe more. At this moment I gave up. In my opinion a gastroenteritis shouldn't cause that much pain but I trusted the doctor diagnosis. Because he is a doctor, and he had years of study and practice behind him. Unlike us. But two days later, she pee a huge kidney stone from her urethra while screaming at the top of her lungs. She had never felt so much pain in her all life. Some say it's more painful than giving birth. We saw a lot of different doctors during the whole night, and no one had listened to my suggestions. So yeah, I get it. There's some annoying patients who wrongly self-diagnose themselves and felt more educated than the doctor they are facing. But, but on the other side, they also are some crappy doctors who don't listen to their patients when they should. So I can understand that some people prefer to do their own research and doesn't fully trust their doctor. Not a doctor, but I am currently in med school. When I was about 12 years old, I felt a painless lump inside my nipple. I thought this was something of low importance. So I continued to live my life. A few days later, when I was in the shower, I felt another painless lump inside my other nipple. I thought this was weird. So I decided to google my symptoms. I thought about male breast cancer, and I knew it was a low chance of me having it, but I decided to look up some signs of the cancer. And there it was. In my exact words. Symptoms of breast cancer include a painless lump in the breast. I was terrified. I informed my parents, and I was in tears. I didn't know what my future would look like, and this thought shook me even more. Would I ever become a doctor? I then searched for treatments of breast cancer on Google, and it said the only treatment was to amputate the breast. I was even more torn. The next day my mom showed me an article about my breast cancer, and it turns out that I was just going through puberty, and this was completely normal. To this day, my family and I still laugh about the incident. If you know how to do a proper search on the internet, and discern bulls from truth, you can actually get pretty far. I helped my doctor diagnose my issues by providing him the information I'd found from people similarly experiencing my condition. Without my searching, the doctor would have just sent me home with antibiotics, again. 
Not a doctor but work as a health advisor for NHS 111 and a teenager once phoned. Probably like 13 stroke 14 because he had a bruise under his fingernail. He'd googled it and thinks it could be cancer. But turns out he knocked it a few hours earlier but had just completely forgotten. Not a doctor but, my family, Aziz, were traveling in India. My sister, 13, started experiencing stomach pains. Of course we assumed it was Delhi Belly. Three days later she still can't keep down food and is pretty much bedbound. Mum starts to get worried and hits up the old goggle. Symptoms line up with appendicitis and there's a touch of panic. We called the doctor and he sent us to the hospital saying worst case scenario is appendicitis. My sister gets out of bed to go to hospital and she instantly turns white. Breaks out in a sweat and becomes unresponsive. Once she comes right we head to hospital and they originally says she's just getting her period. Nope. Takes them a few hours but she has a ruptured appendix. We spend mum's birthday in dodgy hospital in India whilst my sister is in surgery. She's all good now. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.